The Fermi Dirac distribution function is about the statistics of a system of fermions, or quantum particles that satisfy the Pauli exclusion principle. This means that no two fermions can occupy the same quantum state. The most well known fermion particles are the electrons. Let's consider a system with three energy levels, where each level has a G number of states as indicated, also known as its degeneracy. Let's say we have a total of n equals to 5 electrons to distribute. There are of course many ways we can distribute that n equals to 5 electrons. On the left, we can have more electrons populating the lower energy levels, with n1 equals 3, n2 equals 2 and n3 equals 0. On the right, we have more electrons populating the higher energy levels, with n1 equals 1, n2 equals 1 and n3 equals 3. There are of course many other ways of arranging the electrons. The important rule that the electrons have to respect is the Pauli exclusion principle, and that the electrons are indistinguishable, thus we only care about how many electrons are in each energy level, and not the order in which they are arranged since they are fundamentally indistinguishable. Multiplicity is all the possible ways where the electrons can be arranged. We denote the multiplicity for an energy state J as M sub J. Since electrons are identical indistinguishable particles, the number of ways to fill G states with N electrons is then given by the combination formula, which is G factorial divided by N factorial, and divided by G minus N factorial. You can find the link to the video on permutations and combinations in the description below. Using this formula, we can easily work out the multiplicity for each energy level for the system on the left, with the particular distributions of electrons N1 equals 3, N2 equals 2 and N3 equals 0. The total multiplicity M of the system would then be the product of the individual multiplicity of all the energy levels. The total energy of the system U would be the product of the energy and the number of electrons at that energy level, summed over all energy levels. Lastly, the total number of electrons is constrained to be N. In order for us to proceed to the next step, we need to first borrow an equation from Ludwig Boltzmann tombstone. Here, the entropy S has a definition in terms of the number of microstates, given by K sub B, the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the natural log of the system multiplicity M. An important insight by Boltzmann into the second law of thermodynamics is the realization that isolated systems spontaneously evolve towards thermal equilibrium, the state of maximum entropy. Let's work out the entropy of the system using the Boltzmann definition of entropy. We substitute the multiplicity expression into the logarithm, which then allows us to write the product of the multiplicity of the different energy levels as a sum of logarithms. Next, we recall the Stirling approximation as shown, which in the limit of large x allows us to write it in a form without the factorial. Applying the Stirling approximation then allows us to arrive at an expression for the entropy without any factorials. This will serve to be very expedient in our next steps of the derivation. Next, taking the cue from Boltzmann, to find the electron's distribution at equilibrium, we should seek to maximize the system entropy, while at the same time imposing the constraints on the total energy and the number of electrons. To solve this trio of equations, we shall resort to the method of Lagrange multipliers. The method of Lagrange multipliers is a strategy for finding the local maxima and minima of a function subject to equality constraints. We introduce an auxiliary function L, which consists of the entropy S which we seek to maximize, in addition to the two constraints. We seek to find the Lagrange stationary point with respect to the number of particles at each energy level I. To proceed, we first have to find the stationary point for the entropy S. Recall the entropy expression we derived earlier with Stirling approximation. We can work out the stationary point for the entropy by taking differentiation with respect to n sub i. Returning back to the Lagrange stationary point, we can now substitute the entropy stationary point into the expression. The terms involving logarithms can be combined, and with some algebra, we can arrive at an expression for the electron occupation for energy level i, which is the ratio between the number of electrons n sub i to the total available states g sub i at that energy level. This occupation factor is the Fermi-Dirac function we are after, and what is left is to determine the Lagrange multiplier constants alpha and beta. The way to determine the constants alpha and beta is to compare our microscopic expression of the total energy with that of the thermodynamic law. We begin with our microscopic definition of the total energy of the system and express the total energy U in terms of its differential form. Since we are only interested in the variation of n, we can eliminate the first term. We also recall our Lagrange multiplier equation, and obtain an expression for the energy level. Substituting this into the differential of U expression, we obtained a new expression for the differential U in terms of the differential of entropy S and total particles number N. We recall the well-known thermodynamics law. A quick comparison to our microscopic expression of the total energy differential to the thermodynamics law allows us to relate temperature T to 1 over beta, and the Fermi energy to the minus of alpha divided by beta. 
With this, we can easily determine beta to be 1 over temperature T, and alpha to be minus the Fermi energy divided by T. This then allows us to arrive at the final expression of the Fermi Dirac distribution function. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.